Okay, so um, as you guys see, we're dealing with the cosine function. And what you notice with the cosine function is that we see we have the sum. Walk behind, please. We have the sum and we have the difference, right? Again, you will be provided the formulas, but let me write them down so we make sure we're using the correct ones. So the cosine of u plus v equals cosine of u times cosine of e minus the sine of u times the sine of e. Again, guys, we have to make sure we're using the correct formula. And then I also have, over here, I'm doing the difference of two angles. So that's going to be cosine of u minus v, which equals the cosine of u times, geez, the cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. All right. Now, since you're doing this twice, you guys can see there's two different functions, right? Here's the cosine of the sum of two angles. Here's the cosine of the difference of two angles. So I'm going to do this twice. I'll label this u and that v. This will be the u for this one, and that will be the v for that one. It's the same u and v, actually. right? So now let's rewrite them, but now let's plug in my u's and my v's. Since this is the sum, I'm going to use that formula. So cosine of u, well, u in this case is x, times the cosine of pi over 6, minus the sine of u, which is x, times the sine of v, which is pi over 6, right? Minus that minus sign. Now, when introducing the minus sign, or not introducing the minus sign, but when rewriting it, make sure, if you guys remember, this is. This goes from this function, and it goes into this expression, right, that is separated by addition and subtraction. Therefore, if you're subtracting an expression, you have to make sure you distribute by using distributive property. So the most common mistakes is students don't distribute. So what I always like to do is introduce you know, brackets or parentheses. So now, let's do this problem. So now I'm going to use this formula since it's the difference. So now it's cosine of x or of u, well u in this case is x, times cosine of v, which in this case is pi over 6. Remember, it's the positive value, not the um, negative. And then add sine of u, which is x, times the sine of v, which is pi over 6. Does everybody see where I got to this point? Majority of the class got to this point, and then we, it's where we got lost. All right? Do you see what I'm following, Cody? Can you just put that face down? Face. Face. Does everybody see this? Anybody have any questions how I got to this point? All I really did was I used the two formulas twice, and instead of having two angles, I just used x to pi over 6. Okay? Now, so what I'm going to do now is distribute that negative. So by distributing that negative to here to here, I'm going to erase the parentheses, and now that's going to be negative. Right? When you distribute the negative sign, Yes, I don't need to draw the little arrows, right? You guys got it? Distributed it through. So now, before I move any farther, I notice that, oh, this all equals 1, too. I forgot about that. Now, what you guys can see is, guess what? That minus that goes to 0. So a mod, if you don't see that, they might get you a little bit confused. Right? Do you guys see how those go to 0? They're the same expression. One's positive and one's negative. Right? It's like 3 minus 3, 0. 3x minus 3x, 0. 3x squared 4y minus 3x squared minus 4y, 0. Same expression, but one's positive, one's negative. They add up to 0. So now I can combine these terms. Well, again, we look at this. These terms, this expression here, and this term, I guess you could say here, those are the exact same, but there's two of them. So this is negative 2 sine of x sine of pi over 6 equals 1. Does everybody see how I did that? OK. Kobe, I'm being very, very, very polite with you. No, no, no. Put it face down on your desk. So yes? Why didn't you um, evaluate for I'm going to do that next. I'm just trying to do it one step at a time. But yes, you could do that in the early stages as well if you want to. Yep, yep. But first thing, let's evaluate by pi over 6. So sine of pi over 6, 
pi over 6, which is 30 degrees. The sine is the y coordinate, which is 1 half. Okay. So now, when we look at this, is now we can simplify this. But before we go any farther, we know that this isn't in, inside that function anymore. So now, those multiply, right? I can just rewrite this. Negative 2 times 1 half times sine of x equals 1. Maybe that might help you see it better. Yeah? Well, yeah. 3 times 2 times 4. Four times two times three. It doesn't matter how I rewrite the multiplication, right? What's two times negative? What's two times one half? One. What's three times one third? One. Four times one fourth? One. Two times one half? One. But it's going to be negative one now. So now I divide by negative one. So now sine of x equals negative 1. Now we want to find the y coordinate of negative 1. What is the angle when the y coordinate is negative 1? So Hunter, again, we have to go back to that unit circle and say, well, when is the y coordinate negative 1? So we look at all those x, you know, x and y intercepts, and there's only one point where it's going to be negative 1. And now we need to determine, well, what is that angle, right? What is the angle that makes the y coordinate negative 1? If we start here and we go all the way to here, it's going to be 3 pi over 2. Now, I didn't, add, I didn't tell you guys um, the solution. They wanted it only between 0 and 2 pi, which was in the book, but I didn't tell you that. So therefore, that's going to be our only solution. That's the only time. That our x is going to—that's the only time that our angle is going to produce a y coordinate on the inner circle where it equals negative one. Okay, make sense a little bit. Wait, so we're going to say give all the solutions between zero and two pi. We just lose every single one of those. Huh? No, only when it's.